Have you ever done something and then thought, why did I do that? And later you deeply regret what you did. And who hasn't done something you regret because you were angry or hurt? The condition of our hearts greatly affects how we think, what we say, and what we do. Jesus gave us a quick way to examine and correct the attitudes of our heart. This video will show you how. At the end of the video, in the activation, there's a two-minute attitude of your heart test. This will help you to understand why you do what you do and how to change it. What is the true condition of your heart? In Psalm 26, David is telling God how he tries to live a blameless life and how much he loves God. Yet, he also asks God to examine his heart. Test me and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. David knew that we're often unaware of the true condition of our heart. Jeremiah in chapter 17 verses 9 to 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. The attitude of our hearts does affect what we think, say, and do. Even more important, the condition of our hearts affects our ability to receive God's word, which guides us, strengthens, heals our brokenness, and transforms us to be like Jesus. Our distraction and unbelief can make the word of God of no effect in our lives. See Mark 7, 13. Jesus gave us a way to quickly test the attitude of our hearts in this parable. The parable is very familiar, but the application is different. Please stay with me. Your heart is the soil in which God's word is planted. Isaiah 55, 11 assures us that God's word never fails. It always produces what God desires. But the attitude of your heart will determine what God's word will produce in you. Mark 4, 3 to 9 is the parable of the sower and the seed. Consider this. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some fell along the beaten path, and soon the birds came and ate it. Some fell onto gravel with no topsoil and quickly sprouted since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient root. Some fell among the thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. But some fell into good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Jesus is showing us the four attitudes of the heart. The four kinds of soil speak of four kinds of hearts. Hard hearts, hollow hearts, half hearts, and whole hearts. With the first soil, we see the activity of Satan. The second, that of the flesh. And the third, that of the world. Bearing fruit is never a problem with what is sown, but with the soil it falls upon. This is a footnote in the Passion Translation. The condition of our hearts determines what happens with the word of God that we have heard or read. God is the farmer. We are the soil, and the seed is God's word. Jesus explained the parable because the disciples didn't understand. He said, People with hard hearts. God's word doesn't enter their hearts. Their hearts are hardened to the gospel. He meant that they were unable to see, recognize, or understand the truth. And Satan immediately takes away the seed. There are many scriptures about hardened hearts. See, for example, Mark 3, 5, Matthew 13, 15, and Mark 8, 17. Even Christians can have hardness of heart in an area of their lives or on bad days. Second, people with hollow hearts. A rocky soil. They receive the word of God with joy, but they don't grow roots. Mark 4.17 says, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fade away. These are superficial Christians who believe but are not transformed, not really changed. See Romans 12.1-2. They're hearers, not doers of the word. They haven't grown a relationship with God that would sustain them through hard times. Third, people who are half-hearted, Mark 4, 18-19, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Philippians 4, 19 assures us that God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. People preoccupied with concerns of this world allow their situation to overwhelm their faith. They try to solve problems themselves instead of relying on God. Their fear chokes the word of God. Their attention is on the problem, not the problem solver.
Others desire wealth or things of this world more than God's word in their lives. They simply set the Bible and God aside to pursue worldly things. Fourth, people with whole hearts. Mark 4.20 says, Like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. God's word never fails. Isaiah 55.11 So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. There's always power in God's word. His word never fails. But without faith, we can't receive from God. Our faith is what activates God's word in our lives. See Hebrews 11. The greater our faith, the greater the harvest. 30, 60, or 100 times what was sown. James 1, 6 to 8 says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Finally, guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23 reminds us, Above all else, more than anything else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Today's activation. Do a two-minute heart attitude check. Daily declare this. Say it aloud as a promise and a commitment to God. Today, I choose to live wholeheartedly for you. I will not let my heart be hard, offended, angry, cold, indifferent, or rebellious. I will not allow my Christian life to be an empty, hollow thing. I will be a doer, not just a hearer of your word. I will pursue relationship with you, Lord, and with believers. I won't be half-hearted, distracted by the shiny things of the world, and I won't allow concerns and worry to pull me away from you. I will not be double-minded. My heart is wholly yours. Fill me with your presence, your purpose, and your love. Second, here's the two-minute heart attitude check, which you can do several times a day. I recommend that when you do this, uh, you set a specific time every day where you're just going to check, say, how am I doing? Because the truth is, we often don't know what's going on in our heart until it spills out, often in ways that we don't like. So first, ask yourself, am I feeling or acting hard-hearted, hollow-hearted, half-hearted, or whole-hearted toward Jesus and the Father right now? Now, I've defined these below this, but over time, you'll come to know what they are. Hard-hearted. Am I feeling hatred, offended, angry, cold, or indifferent, or unforgiving? Am I rebelling against God? Am I intentionally sinning, disobeying God, or resisting what he's told me to do? Hollow-hearted. Am I being a casual, passive Christian? Am I a hearer, but not a doer of God's word? Do I walk away from God when trouble or persecution comes because of my faith? Do I have a relationship with Jesus? Half-hearted. Am I distracted, pursuing human desires instead of God? Examples of this are the pride of life, wanting to be my own God, to do whatever I want. Um, Also things like sexual lust, uh, greed, envy, strife and division, selfish ambition, drug abuse, idolatry, which is simply making something greater in my life than God. See Galatians 5, 19 to 21. And finally, wholehearted. Am I loving God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength? Am I all in, living for Jesus, and receiving his love? If you find that you have an influence in your life that is not God, you need to repent and replace that influence with God. Mark 12, 30 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. Lord, I will seek you first. You will meet all my needs. Matthew 6, 33, promise. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And the final part of this is to renew your mind. Once you identify an area that you need to change, read scriptures that promise what you need or what you want and let God fill it. God loves to fill our desires. As you delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. I've tested and proven that scripture hundreds of times in my life. It's absolutely true. He may take time, but he'll do it. Use this quick test to discover the true condition of your heart. Then let God fill your deepest desires as you renew your mind with his word. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Romans 12.2, New Living Translation. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. Until next time, God bless.